Lord God, Father, with all our getting to get understanding that we are changed from the inside out. Up. Beyond the storm, beyond the trial. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I am Tony Brooke Brown coming with our word today as we continue on our study in the book of Exodus. We are in chapter 28. We are still talking about the children of Israel. We are still talking about how God has given instructions to Moses as it relates to the tabernacle, as it relates to the priestly clothing. And we are in the midst of talking about the garments for the priest, for Aaron specifically, and then his sons, which is much much less but we are in the midst of that and we are looking in the stories uh, of the old testament and the children of israel right now to see how it relates to us right uh the old testament natural stories things that happened things that took place with god's children god's people it is uh telling of the coming of christ in the new testament in which we are uh abiding in christ and we are um you know living in christ jesus in the spiritual these all have spiritual meanings for us this is um the same type of journey the same type of uh uh deliverance you know from bondage and slavery from the enemy and going forth headed to a promised land but there is a journey in the midst of it there are some things that are required there are some things that we are instructed in just as the children of israel were given instructions and so we want to take a look in exodus 28 we're beginning in verse 15 we have already covered in chapter 28 uh the beginning of the priestly garment we talked about the ephod um and we talked about um well, we talked about the ephod and we talked about the fact that um, Moses was to make sure these things were done exactly the way God said for sacred garments for Aaron and for his sons. And um, this was because they were set apart for God's purposes. We talked about Aaron and his sons. Aaron is the first high priest, right? And all of the Levites are... Um, you know, set apart for God's spiritual purposes. Uh, they take care of the tabernacle. All the priests come from uh, the Levites. And let's be clear that not all Levites are priests, but all priests are Levites. And so, um, but all of them were set apart. And we'll see later on, you know, especially when they get to the promised land, how um, they're just kind of set apart, not even getting the same kind of land or allotment as the others but a portion of others and so we'll look at that later on but they are very significant set apart in the last session we talked about the fact that we are a royal priesthood that we are uh adopted into through our faith in the lord jesus christ into a priestly family how jesus again is our high priest but we have to look at ourselves and what this these scriptures mean for us in our walk what these scriptures mean as far as who Jesus is for us as a high priest. So we want to go forth in the verse of, uh, in verse 15. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come and we lift you up and praise you and honor you and glorify you. And we just thank you for your word, for your truth. We thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit to teach us, to guide us, to lead us, to give us confirmation, instruction, and direction that we can hear your word and apply it, that we are doers only, we are doers and not hearers only, that we are growing by faith. We are growing because of your word, Lord God. Father, as we meditate on your word day and night, our minds are being renewed, our lives are being changed, and we thank you, Lord God, that we are gaining greater understanding, wisdom, and knowledge of who you are, who we are, and whose we are. And so, Father, help us, mold us, shape us, purge us, prune us, and make us the men and women of God you purpose us to be. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So again, in verse 15, it starts saying, And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work. After the work of the ephod, thou shalt make it of gold, of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, and of fine twined linen shall thou make it. So now we're talking about the breastplate. And this breastplate is put, um, it's on the chest of, let me give you a little picture here, um, on the chest right here and it's going to be connected if you remember to the pieces on the ephod the onyx stones that had um you know the names of the sons right uh of israel six on one side six on the other 
So before I go into the picture, I just want us to see this is called the breastplate of judgment. Okay, and so this is a chess piece. And as we are uh, going through with the description of it, uh, we're reminded of the breast, you know, the breastplate that is part of our armor. But this breastplate in the Hebrew, because the Old Testament was originally written in the Hebrew, the word is koshen. It's actually spelled C-H-O-S-H-E-N. But it's the phonetic spelling, the sounding out of it is koshen. And so this is a breast piece, a breast piece or a sacred pouch. And I'm going to tell you why it is a pouch in just a minute. Let's look at um, some more of the description here. Uh, the Bible tells us um, not only is it, remember he said of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen twine. In verse 16, four score it shall be um, being doubled. A span shall be the length of thereof and a span shall be the breadth thereof. So in other words, um, it says make the chest piece of a single piece of cloth folded to form a pouch, nine inches square, okay? And so then in verse 17, it says thou shall set it in settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be a sardius, a topaz, and a carbuncle. This shall be the first row. Uh, the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. The third row, a ligure, a, a, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, and an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold in their enclosing. So these are gemstones. Now, we don't know what all the gemstones are. And even when you study these, they say they don't know what all the gemstones are. Some of them we know. Of course, we know what a diamond is, a sapphire, emerald, an amethyst, a onyx, you know. But some of them, you know, um, not quite sure. But the thing is, is that these are gemstones uh, and they're set in gold in their enclosing. And then it says in verse 21, the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel, 12, according to their names, like the engravings of a signet. Every one with his name shall they be according to the 12 tribes. So, again, just like with the onyx on the shoulders with the names six on each side, this has given us the, uh, the breastplate, right? And it has these 12 gemstones in it. And it says that the stones will have the names of the children of Israel. All 12. These are representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Right? And so this is what we're looking at here. Now this, again, be sure to know. These are pictures. You know, people make pictures based off of what they've read. Um, what the Hebrews say. What they know. But... Every picture is not exactly the same, okay? You know, so here we have, let's see if we can get that in there. Okay, so you see all of these gems in here. These are the gems. Uh-oh. Oh, hold on a second. Here we go. Those are the gems right here that we were just talking about. Right. And then as we read on, we're going to see, see if I can get the glare out of part of it. It's going to be hooked to the shoulders. And if you remember from the last session, that's where the onyx were on either side. And so this is going to be connected to that. Right. But this square is the breastplate, the chest piece. And it's called a pouch also. That's what that name means as well. And it's folded in half. So why is there a pouch? Well, as we continue to read in verse 22, it says, And thou shall make upon the breastplate chains at the ends of wreathen work of pure gold. And thou shall make upon the breastplate two rings of gold and shall put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. 
And thou shalt put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings which are on the ends of the breastplate. And the other two ends of the two wreathen chains thou shalt fasten in the two is that supposed to say ouches and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. Now remember the ephod was the first thing we described and it, it was connected the front and the back piece. The front and the back piece were connected by the onyx. And so now this breastplate is going to be attached to those pieces, right? And so the shoulder pieces of the ephod. In verse 26, it says, And thou shalt make two rings of gold, and thou shalt put them upon the two ends of the breastplate in the border thereof, which is in the side of the ephod inward. And two other rings of gold thou shalt make, and shalt put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath, toward the fore part thereof, over against the other coupling thereof, above the curious girdle of the ephod and they shall bind the breastplate by the rings thereof unto the rings of the ephod with the lace of blue that it may be above the curious girdle of the ephod and that the breastplate be not loosed from the ephod so this is attached so that it will not uh, come off. You know, there's two gold rings. They're attached to the inside edges of the chest piece next to the ephod. Then two more gold rings and they're attached to the front of the ephod below the shoulder pieces just above the knot where the decorative sash is fastened to the ephod. And then it says to attach the bottom rings of the chest piece to the rings on the ephod with blue cords. And this will hold the chest piece securely to the ephod above the decorative sash. So, um, this one, I don't know if you can see this one, but if you look at the bottom of it, you'll see that it's attached down at the bottom of the, um, check the breastplate as well. It's attached down here. So it's attached at the top, it's attached down here as well. So it's on there, right? And so then in verse 29, uh, it says, now this is the purpose, right? It's saying in verse 29, Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goes in unto the holy place for the memorial before the Lord continually. So now this is so, remember it, he's carrying the names with them, right? And they're on the breastplate. And so he has the names on his shoulders. He has his names, their names before his heart. And it says when he goes into the Lord, that's it's there for that purpose. And Aaron shall bear, it says, the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. So verse 30, thou shall put it in the breastplate of judgment, the Urim and the Thummim. And they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. Now, let's cover a couple of things. First of all, the Urim and the Thummim, you'll hear, you'll hear a few more times in some other books um, as it relates to uh, in Samuel and Numbers um, and a couple other verses of Scripture. Now, this the Bible never fully describes the Urim and the Thummim, but they're in this breastplate, right? That's with a pouch for that. So now these things, these two pieces, some say that they think like it's a white stone and a dark stone, right? But they don't know. And so I'm not even teaching that. So um, the thing is, is that there's no full description of them. And, but they are used in the scripture when, they were and people were in need of an answer to something. They needed some discernment for something. They needed some guidance for something. It's that they would say, go get the Urim and the Thummim. It was like it was a way to uh, get an answer from the Lord. It was a way for them to, uh, you know, to get some instruction. And so the high priest would ask God a question and reach into his breastplate. And so we don't really know, like they're guessing that he may pull out like an answer, 
yes or no or something like that. But we don't know that, so I'm not going to teach it because it sounds weird like that when people start guessing. It starts sounding like some superstitious thing. But this was something that God put together. He orchestrated it. He instructed it. He had a pattern and a model, a plan and instructions that had to be followed directly. So God can do whatever he wants to do. This is not a man-made thing. This is not some type of crazy Ouija board or something that man came up with where they're trying to find the answers to some ridiculousness. It's not any type of witchcraft. This is something that God put in place because it's holy. This is something that he put on the high priest only. The high priest had this. This was Aaron's uh, garments that we are describing right here. And so this Urim and this Thummim, um, it means lights and perfections. That's what the two words mean. Um, and so they're kind of like a ornament uh, that belongs in like the habit of the high priest. And so... Um, so this is what God's people looked at for divine guidance when it was needed. And so um, so we want to understand that is that this, this whole outfit has a purpose, right? It's not just something that Aaron's throwing on. It's not some robe that, you know, some pastor picked up at the robe store. This is something that God said, I want it made like this. I want it this color. I want it made out of this. I want it this size. I want this engraved in it. I want it... You know, these gemstones, I want them in these spaces. You can't just put the gemstones anywhere. He said what he wanted in the first row, in the second row, in the third row, and the fourth row. So everything, again, is very specific as, you know, the way God gives the instructions for what he desires. And so, uh, as we continue to look in the scripture... We are looking at, excuse me, I got to go back. I was, um, so it says that Aaron is going to bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. So he is bearing like he is um, carrying basically these children of Israel. He has to have a love for the people and realize he is representing the people of God. You know, this is something that's important for us because as we go before God, even when we're interceding for people and those that are in positions in the body of Christ, any of us, as we're praying, as we're seeking on behalf of others, we have to recognize how holy this is, that this is not something that we can just do haphazardly, right? And Aaron had to recognize that he is going in the presence of the Lord on behalf of these people. So he couldn't come any kind of way. And we need to understand that, that when we're going in, standing in the gap for somebody, praying for the church, for the, you know, praying for people's salvation, praying for, you know, various things that we're bringing before God um, on behalf of others, we have to recognize um, that this is holy. God is holy. And this is what I want to show you here as we um, as we look a little bit further here. Um, what this says in the NLT is in this way, Aaron will always carry over his heart the objects used to determine the Lord's will for his people whenever he goes in before him. And so that's what it said in the NLT, the second half of verse 30. But let's go down to verse 31. And in verse 31, he's telling him to make a robe of the ephod, all of blue. So we got the ephod, which is like the vest, right? We have the, the, uh, the onyx that were the shoulder pieces holding the front and the back of the ephod together. We have the breastplate. We have the gemstones in it. We have the names of the the, the tribes of Israel, the names of the sons we have. Um, but now this is the robe of the ephod, all of blue. And so that is what you see here underneath the vest. This is the blue that you see down here. That is the robe. So it tells us there should be a hole in the top of it in the midst thereof. Uh, it shall have a binding of woven work around about the whole of it as it were the whole of a habergeon, that it be not rent. And so now the hole that it's talking about is the hole for Aaron's head to go through. And so this is, you know, the, the part where 
Aaron puts it on, then it's, it's basically saying reinforce the opening with a woven collar so it won't tear. So that's basically what we just read. And then in verse 33, it says, Beneath and beneath upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof, and bells of gold between them round about. A gold bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe round about. So, this is kind of tiny to see. At the bottom of the blue there, look down and you'll see the little things at the bottom. It's like a little pomegranate, a bell, a pomegranate, a bell, a pomegranate, a bell, all the way around. So it's tiny little um, uh, pomegranates and bells all the way around. And so then it says in verse 35, it shall be upon Aaron to minister and his sound shall be heard when he goes in unto the holy place before the Lord. And when he comes out that he die not. So it says he has to have this on when he goes in. Right. And he has to have this on in the holy place um, when he comes out so he won't die. And so they say that, you know, that as long as the bells are on. The high priest, when they would go in, the people would be able to hear and they would know where they're at in there. That If the bell stopped, then they know that the priest has died in there. And so, again, they couldn't go into the holiest of holies any kind of way. They couldn't go in there, you know, and just put on whatever they want to put on and go in any kind of way. There was a specific way that they entered into the presence of God. And here we see even in the clothing. And so these bells... You should be able to hear them. They could hear the priest on the inside, the high priest. And so it says, so he won't die. Verse 36, and thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it like the engravings of a signet. Holiness to the Lord. So now there is this plate of gold, right? And it says, a holiness to the Lord. And it says, you shall put it on a blue lace that it may be upon the midder, upon the forefront of the midder it shall be and so this is um there is like a, a turban um and so it's gonna be like a medallion a pure gold medallion engraved that says holiness to god so he's set apart for god right and it says attach the medallion with the blue cord to the front of aaron's turban where it stays so we got the turban here at the top on the high priest's head there. They had a turban. Can you see it? I don't know. Okay, so anyways, there's a turban, right? And there's a medallion uh, attached to it. And it says Aaron must wear it on his forehead. I'm looking at the NLT right now in verse 38. Aaron must wear it on his forehead so he may take on himself any guilt of the people of Israel when they consecrate their sacred offerings. He must always wear it on his forehead so the Lord will accept the people. And then it says weave Aaron's patterned tunic from fine linen cloth. Fashion the turban from this linen as well. Also, make a sash and decorate it with colorful embroidery. So now he has uh, the robe. He has a turban that has like a medallion on it. Uh, it says holiness to God or holiness. Wait a minute. Let me. The, the King James says it says holiness to the Lord. And so that is what it says. And he has to keep that on. Uh, but then. Um, he has this turban, he has a sash, it's decorated with colorful embroidery. And verse 40 uh, in the NLT is talking about his sons. It says, for Aaron's sons make tunics, sashes, special head coverings that are glorious and beautiful. Clothe your brother Aaron and his sons with these garments and then anoint and ordain them, consecrate them so they serve as my priests. So see that the sons have to have holy garments also but it's not as detailed it's not as you know it's there's not as much put into it because the high priest has a whole nother job that's why the the high priest is the only one that can go in uh to the holiest of holies or the most holy place and so his sons have um uh specific garments that they have to wear but it is not as 
uh, specific and not as detailed and not as important as what Aaron has to wear. So it says also make linen undergarments for them to be worn next to their bodies, reaching from their hips to their thighs. These must be worn whenever Aaron and his sons enter the tabernacle or approach the altar in the holy place to perform their priestly duties. Then they will not incur guilt and die. This is a permanent law for Aaron and all his descendants after him. So they have to wear um, linen underwear um, every time they go into the holy place. So um, all of Aaron's descendants are the priesthood. They come from Aaron's descendants. Aaron is Moses' brother. They need one another. Remember, Moses needed Aaron because Moses said he couldn't speak well. So God sent Aaron with them because he was his mouthpiece. But now Aaron is going to be doing the priestly duties, the high priest, right? And so Moses is going to need him. But then he's going to need Moses because Moses is the leader. I say all that to say that we're all here for a purpose. We all have a different specific um, gift, uh, talent, calling. Uh, office, whatever you want to call it, whatever it is that we need to do, we need to do it together. Every person has their part, but every part is important. And that's what the New Testament talks about as far as us being one body, many members, but every member is just as important as the other. And so these are specific instructions for the garments, um, but we also want to remember Jesus as our high priest. Jesus is our high priest, right? He didn't get a, a turban with a medallion on it. He had a, 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 a crown of thorns because he wasn't just our high priest. He isn't just our high priest, but he's also the sacrifice. He also was humiliated for us, hung on the cross. And, you know, and so we're looking at the comparison here, but we're also looking at some differences here. How Jesus, how, how the high priest, how the priests were always offering sacrifices, but Jesus as the sacrifice was the sacrifice once and for all. And so just to look at, you know, he had a, 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 a robe that, that was put on, um, you know, when he was going to be crucified, but it was for him to be humiliated and mocked in. It wasn't some elaborate garments that he had on as a high priest. And so we see the humility uh, as Jesus is our high priest where he is not adorned like this, but he is humble and he is obedient to, to death, the Bible says. So as we are closing out in this, I'm going to ask you to look at for your memory verses, Hebrews uh, chapter uh, 7, and you're looking at verses uh, 20. First of all, write down Hebrews 12 and 14, okay, because... We want to re remember that we need holiness to get into the presence of the Lord. And because uh, the, the uh, medallion on the turban said holiness to the Lord, uh, we want to remember Hebrews 12, 14 says, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And so we want to remember that. And the other thing that you want to remember with Aaron's sons, it was three things that were spoken of them. Uh, Moses was told, anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them. So to anoint them describes the application of, you know, them having oil on them, right? And we know that oil oftentimes is talking in the scriptures uh, as it relates to us as the Holy Spirit. So this is uh, consistent with the New Testament and the Holy Spirit upon us, but they are being anointed with oil, anointed with power, and then consecrated is them being um, really just kind of uh, set apart. You know, the consecration, they are being cleansed, I'm sorry, and sanctified, they are being set apart. With both of these, they are being made clean. They are um, being spiritually and morally set apart as priests, um, they are, and we're going to talk about them being consecrated and set apart and um, prepared as priests. They are going to be dedicated in their positions as we go further in scripture, but anointed, consecrated, and sanctified. So I encourage you to go and kind of study those words because those are important because as they are priests, we are called to be priests of the Lord. And so we want to know what does that mean? Because we're called to be anointed. We're called to, you know, to be filled with the Holy Ghost, to be empowered, but also to be set apart, to be cleansed. And so um, 
Also, the Hebrews chapter 7 I was telling you about is to look in verses... We're looking at Hebrews chapter 7. <laughs> I'm there. 20, I want you to look at 23 through 28. 23 through 28. Read that, study that, meditate on that. And so we're going to close out in prayer. I know we went a little bit over, um, but I want you to study up on um, the Hebrews verses I gave you. And I want you to look at anointed, consecrated, and sanctified. Look them up, uh, study those words. And we're going to close out in prayer because when we come back, we're going to talk about the priest being uh, dedicated, but we're going to talk about how that relates to us and go a little bit deeper. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you and we praise you. We glorify you, God. We thank you for your divine presence and your Holy Spirit guiding, leading, and directing us. Help us to draw nearer to you that you would draw nearer to us, that everything we do will bring glory and honor and praise to your name. God, we thank you for calling us and changing us. Lord God, Father, for uh, giving us new life, eternal life, abundant life. We thank you, Lord God, Father, for constantly purifying us, purging us, and pruning us, removing unwanted elements. Anything that is not of you, Lord God, we pray that you would cleanse us from the inside out, that we would be all that you purpose us to be, that we will not bring shame to your name, but that we would glorify you. And so, Father, we thank you. We praise, love, and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you to life. I'll see you on our next sit-ups. It's time for sit-ups, all sit-ups, spiritual impact training using prayer.